It really is a tremendous experience and very realistic. And it, particularly if you're doing instrument flying, something like that, well, it's just wonderful. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching. And today we're going to be having a look and talking about an aspect of flight simulation that doesn't get enough airtime, in my opinion. And that is having a look at those that are perhaps doing their PPL or maybe their instrument or type rating or those pro simmers more interested in the procedural and technical aspect of their flight sim experience. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that something such as virtual reality, for example, provides great spatial awareness, depth perception and so on. But when it comes to interacting with the cockpit, by and large, we're still limited to the mouse. And very often those undergoing training or looking for the more procedural side of things, well, they don't want to use the mouse. Also, in terms of clarity, when you start moving up the chain in terms of visibility within virtual reality, once again, there are limitations until you get more or less to the top end and then costs start to become prohibitive, especially when you consider many of those doing their training are perhaps the younger generation. So in this video, we're going to be having a look at what is available, what can we do, and how can we provide a realistic cockpit experience for those looking for the more technical side of things for something around $500, no more. And we're going to be looking at a number of things. Principally, we're going to be having a look at an innovative and new bracket that's been brought out by a company called Cockpit Crafters that fits onto the Honeycomb and Alpha Bravo. And we're going to be using that in conjunction with a touchscreen monitor. Don't bulk at that. They're not as expensive as you think. You can get a pretty good one, 15.6 inch or 14 inch, for under 200 US dollars or 200 pounds. And we'll also be looking at software that will enable that realistic interaction such as air manager simbox and the like so let's get on with it like most things there's many different ways to achieve a single objective the approach i've taken in this video is to remain within a realistic budget maintaining a focus on instrumentation facilitate a hands-on approach eliminating the use of the mouse as much as practical so i've opted for a secondary monitor and to allow for that hands-on interaction, a touchscreen. Many people learning or training are probably doing on a light GA aircraft, so I've selected a yoke, as well as a mounting bracket that's compatible with both the Honeycomb and Logitech series of yokes, as ideally we'd want that instrument pack right in front of us as it is in the real aircraft. And of course, some software that will allow that interactivity and ideally covering both Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane, the two most popular sims out there. Let's start by having a look at the mounting bracket that will help us bring everything together. It's an absolutely brand new product from a brand new company. Developed by two people based in Germany, one of which is undergoing his PPL training. Two versions are available, the standard bracket and the Pro version, which has an extended side piece to accommodate the Knobster, or your compatible rotary device. If you're not sure what the Knobster is, you can check out my review here, link in the notes below. Both of the Cockpit Crafters mounting brackets are designed to accommodate a secondary monitor. Maximum size is 15.6 inch, but will also support 14 inch. But it does require that monitor to have a Visa 75mm fitting. With the bracket, you also get the necessary screws to attach to your selected monitor. The range of monitors available is fairly extensive. Just have a look at somewhere like Amazon, for example. And Cockpit Crafters also offer a pack which includes the monitor if selected. The key takeaways for the monitor include the 75mm Visa fitting, as I mentioned. If it's a touch monitor, then it will require a USB-C port. Most are 1080p which is perfect for a secondary monitor and less load on your system. The panels also come with an optional extra, which will accommodate the mounting of a mobile phone to the panel itself to enable face tracking such as OpenTrack, etc. This option is a separate purchase. 
Let's take a quick look at the brackets themselves. These are certainly built to last and made out of a solid steel. On the bottom are pre-drilled holes for attachment to Logitech or Honeycomb yokes. Also compatible with the Bravo of course. And as you can see, the cross section of steel is fairly substantial. It's nice and weighty but not so that it would damage your peripheral. Has pre-drilled holes for the Visa 75mm fitting. And the center hole is to accommodate the mounting bracket for the mobile or cell phone. Face tracking you using your mobile phone, such as OpenTrack, of course, or Freeway. With the Pro bracket, it's much the same. You do get screws to accommodate the attachment of your rotary device or knobster. Once again, it's sturdy folded steel with a nice texture to the finish. It may seem to some degree slightly over-engineered, but it is designed to support a monitor and a touch monitor at that. So you don't really want a bracket that's moving and uh, bending or vibrating. This is my first time experimenting with a touch monitor and I must say I was surprised at just how light they are. Being considerably smaller than most monitors, the 1080p resolution, well it's just great. Here you can see I've mounted the standard bracket to my Bravo throttle quadrant as part of my next level racing sim rig and I attached it to the Bravo using the Bravo's built-in screws, which are along the top plate. Install was simple and easy. Hey guys, I'm not sure how well this is going to come out. Uh, the screen is uh, highly reflective, of course. However, I just want to show you a couple of use cases. For example, I've got Simbox on here. I'm in uh, the uh, Beach Baron. And uh, for example, I can change my heading. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but the heading bug is changing so I can fly. I don't need to use my mouse because I can control all of my autopilot. I can add in lights, for example, if I wanted to. So now I've got light control or perhaps my map. Again, not sure how well that will come out. And again, being a touch panel, of course, I can just touch the panel make changes, engage the autopilot, select altitude, for example, and so on and so forth. So there's one typical example. The ways that it can assist you is fairly endless. Here, for example, I've got up level, a little nav map. Um, I've got a route planned in to the aircraft and uh, I can zoom in, get the details that I want pick up airport information and so on and so forth. So let's now turn to the Pro Bracket, which I've installed on the Honeycomb yoke. And this is a very typical Pro Sim and training setup. So for example, I've got my 15.6 inch touch panel here, touch monitor. I'm using the Cockpit Crafters Pro Stand, so or Pro Bracket, so it's got the knobster installed here mounted very securely on the side in in the bracket provided and it's all mounted on my alpha yoke i've also got a mobile phone so i can use open track for face tracking although in this particular case i won't be uh, actually demoing that but just indicating how the mobile phone would fit and so on and if we have a look at the um at the cockpit here, let's just get a closer look, you'll see that the layout of the instruments is by and large exactly what we have in the cockpit. It, I'm using Air Manager um, and it's a simple drag and drop and then these, using a plug-in, these instruments reflect exactly what is happening um, in SIM. So for example, if I touch on heading, for example, you can see it's highlighted in yellow. I can now use the knobster to adjust. Hopefully you'll be able to see that on the monitor and also here as I adjust it. So the heading bug is changing. Um, I, I can do it on just about anything, for example, again, because it's touch. Um, there you go. I've switched the avionics off avionics back on and the garments are coming back alive and so on 
um, I can put my pito heat on. Um, so I've got a combination now of touch controls and if you want to you can use the Knobster. I'll leave a link to the Knobster review in the notes below but the Knobster is a twin rotary and uh, with a push button, push button action as well. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'm going to go to the view. I don't need to see the instruments in the cockpit. I have checked. They, they do um, read exactly what's happening. So what we can do is advance the throttle. Keep your eye. We keep your eye on the airspeed here. Here we go. Airspeed's coming up. 40 knots now. When we take off, we'll be looking at the vertical speed and also our indicator, our horizon indicator here. Rotate. Now pulling up 80 knots. I'm climbing at about 500 feet. And you can see here, this is indicating so let me do a turn the bank and you can see the horizon changing there got an indication of our rpm and so on and so forth so it just shows you how easy it is to do some training or perhaps pro simming where you've got the instrument pack right in front of you right by the yoke as is the case in the real world you can use head tracking if you want and uh, your views are simply looking out the window. It really is a tremendous experience and very realistic and particularly if you're doing instrument flying, something like that, well it's just wonderful. Before having a look at some details on Air Manager, let's have a look at some pricing for cockpit crafters. The prices you see are in pounds include the 20% VAT applicable in the UK and includes shipping costs as well. This is the price for the standard bracket. A note that cockpit crafters sell worldwide. Shipping costs predominantly are included, but some variations do apply as shown on screen at the moment. Free shipping offer is time limited. Pricing for the Touch Bracket Pro is only nominally more expensive and the same parameters apply. For both bracket options, you also get the option to add in the face tracking bundle which is essentially the mobile phone holder and comes with a set of instructions for open track. In addition, Cockpit Crafters have kindly added a discount code. Enter the code shown on screen and you'll get a 10% discount on checkout. Note this discount only applies to the brackets themselves and not package deals including the monitors. As an aside, I think it's worth mentioning I'm not associated or affiliated with Cockpit Crafters in any way. So in the event of queries, please contact them directly for clarification. If you didn't want to source your own monitor, you can buy a bundle from Cockpit Crafters. This is the price with the standard bracket and once again includes local taxes and shipping. And this is the price for the Pro version. Note figures quoted in this video are correct at time of recording this video and are subject to change. Turning now to Air Manager. Air Manager has for many, many years been the de facto standard for cockpit builders and for those wanting to design their own instrument panels. It's compatible with Vexplane, Microsoft Flight Simulator, FSX, Prepared and so on. And it's from the same company that brought us the Knobster, Sim Innovations. Includes a host of pre-made panels and a whole bevy of different instruments and works on a very simple drag and drop principle. The price for the base software is about 65 euros. Optional extensions are available. Here we are in Air Manager with a slightly modified Cessna panel. You can select various instruments from a wide range of options and drag and drop, adjust the size and so on. Providing you've installed the plugin, then they'll work within the sim as well. This is not a tutorial on Air Manager, it's a comprehensive program and beyond the scope of this video. But this is really designed just to give you an indication of what is available. 
for what I consider to be an exceptionally good price. The range available is not infinite, some of the panel configurations are free, and some there's an additional 10 euro charge. And not all panels are compatible with all SIMs, but these parameters are clearly indicated within the program. Here for example is a freeware Boeing radio panel. Flight simulation in one form or another is becoming a very common and practical tool for those undergoing flight training and the advances in technology that are taking place right now in terms of the accuracy and fidelity of the various aircraft means for those pro simmers that are looking for that detail while well, it's available now. And I hope that this video has given you some idea of the sort of things that can be achieved and that you'll investigate it further. But for now, I hope you found it interesting and informative. Stay well, see you soon, and ciao for now.